Section 2, A Lesson from History The Fall of Babylon of Old Part 3a, A Lesson from History Babylon of Old Centuries before the fall of Babylon, Isaiah announced, And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken onto the ground. Isaiah chapter 21 verse 9. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 60. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 29. Babylon was a country, a city with inhabitants, but it was destroyed according to the words of prophecy and his story. Part 3b, especially for the last days. Taken from 4th Bible Commentary, page 1166, and Testimony to the Ministers, page 114. Read the book of Daniel. Call up point by point the history of the kingdoms there represented. Behold, statesmen, councils, powerful armies, and see how God wrath to abase the pride of man and lay human glory in the dust. God alone is represented as great. In the vision of the prophet, he is seen casting down one mighty ruler and setting up another. He is revealed as the monarch of the universe, about to set up his everlasting kingdom, the ancient of days, the living God, the source of all wisdom, the ruler of the present, the revealer of the future. Read and understand how poor, how frail, how short-lived, how erring, how guilty is man in lifting up his soul unto vanity. When the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. They will be given such a glimpse of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. Part 3c Tracing Babylon in History Daniel chapter 2 verses 28 and 38 but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thou art this head of gold. We encourage you to read Daniel chapter 2 verses 1 to 49, and visit our website at numbers1317.org in the appendix for further study of the timelines of the book of Daniel. This chart represents the great image of Daniel chapter 2, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And as Daniel mentions, the head of gold was Babylon, which was in power from 605 to 539 BC. Followed in history by the arm and the chest of silver of the great image, was Medo Persia, which reigned from 539 BC to 331. The ties of brass points to Greece in history, which reigned from 331 to 168 BC, followed by the legs of iron, which points to pagan Rome, the Roman Empire, from 168 BC to 476 AD. It was during this reign that the Roman Catholic Church, with the church and state power, established the first Sunday law between 321 to 325 AD, 
and this was with the approval of the pagan Rome Empire. Followed by the feet of iron and clay, pointing to papal Rome, which now represent the first papal supremacy, which is past, and papal Rome reigned according to the prophecy under its first supremacy as a church and state power for 1260 years, according to the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And this was the Holy Roman Empire from 538 to 1798. AD. Under these powers, we have the history of Israel going into captivity under Babylon for 70 years from 605 to 536 BC, and this is when Judah was taken away. Under Medo Persia, Judah regained its freedom and returned to Israel in 536 BC. Under Gratia or Greece, Judah was again under domination in their own country under the Greeks. Under now the legs of iron, pagan Rome, the Roman Empire, we see again another domination in their own country. In 7080, Israel was dispersed throughout the world. With the feet of iron, we have now another captivity domination, which is future, which is the second papal supremacy. This is just a brief history and where Babylon sits as the head of gold and the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Part 3D, a dual representation. Reading from the Youth Instructor, September 22, 1903, and Manuscript 63, 1899, and Fourth Bible Commentary, page 1168. The image revealed to Nebuchadnezzar while representing the deterioration of the kingdoms of the earth in power and glory also fitly represents the deterioration of religion and morality among the people of these kingdoms. As nations forget God in like proportion, they become weak morally. And this is applicable for us today. Babylon passed away because in her prosperity she forgot God and ascribed the glory of her prosperity to human achievement, as represented by the head of gold. The Medo Persian kingdom was visited by the wrath of heaven because in this kingdom, God's law was trampled on the foot. The fear of the Lord found no place in the hearts of the people. The prevailing influences in Medo Persia were wickedness, blasphemy, and corruption, as represented by the chest and the arms of silver. The kingdoms that followed Greece by the brass and pagan Rome by the legs of iron were even more base and corrupt. They deteriorated because they cast off their allegiance to God. As they forgot him, they sank lower and still lower in the scale of moral value. And now we are at the feet of iron and clay, representing the mingling of churchcraft and statecraft, representing the Roman Catholic Church and apostate Pot Protestantism mingled also with spiritualism. We have come to a time when God's sacred work is represented by the feet of the image in which the iron was mixed with the mari clay. God as a people, a chosen people, whose discernment must be sanctified, who must not become unholy by laying upon the foundation wood, hay, and stubble. Part 4a, the four beasts of the, out of the sea, an historical application found in Daniel chapter 7 verses 1 to 8 and also represented through the image of Daniel 2. Reading from Daniel chapter 7 verse 1 and 2 now, Daniel speak and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The sea 
or the water. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, is explained as being, And he said unto me, The waters or the sea which thou sawest, where the whore seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, which represent very inhabited world. The four beasts, or the four kings, as per Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings. So now we will be representing those four kings through Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and pagan Rome and pagan papal Rome, which we have seen in the image of Daniel 2. Reading from chapter 7, verse 4 of Daniel, the first was like a lion. And had eagle wings, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and the man's heart was given to it. This is Babylon. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. And this is, again, from Daniel chapter 7, verse 5, pointing to Medo-Persia. Reading now from Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which shot upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it, definitely pointing to Greece. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7, After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So first it speaks about pagan Rome, but now it will be speaking about papal Rome, as we read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. So the ten horns first seen here in Daniel 7, verse 7, are now in verse 8 and Daniel chapter 7 verse 24 we give the definition the horns are kings so now we have the composite of the four beasts which points definitely to the same in historical application to the image of Daniel 2 part 4b the historical beast out of the sea Daniel chapter 7 verses 4 to 7. Comparing now these verses to the historical application, the lion points to Babylon, the same order as what we saw in Daniel chapter 2. The bear is compared to Medo-Persia, as well as the three ribs in the mouth of the bear that the country of Medo-Persia conquered Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. The third animal, which is the leopard, points to Alexander the Great and Greece, and the fourth general who took over after the death of Alexander the Great, Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. And the fourth beast, terrible and dreadful, is the fierce beast of Rome, with the ten horns of the divided kingdom. And we have here four unclean animals, which in the executive judgment is represented in chapter 7 of Daniel, verse 26. We have the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the dreadful and terrible beast. Part 5, the four beasts out of the earth, a primary application. A primary application points to a present-day application, meaning the prophecy has met its fulfillment. The four beasts out of the earth in Daniel chapter 7, verses 17 and 21. And we are told that they are four kings. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. 
but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever we accentuate here the fact that these four beasts are four kings out of the earth and it is pointing to a present day application in part six the fourth beast with the ten horns and ten kings daniel chapter 7 verse 19 and also verses 20 23 and 24 then i will know the truth of the fourth beast which was the reverse from all the others exceeding dreadful whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass which devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet and out of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things whose look was more stout than his fellows i beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them thus he said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings so again we accentuate the fact that the fourth beast is the fourth kingdom and it has ten horns and it shows ten kings that arise and again we are pointing to a present day application or a primary application in part five we saw already the four beasts out of the earth daniel chapter 7 verses 17 to 24 gives us further information but now we are looking at an application for the future the fourth holy roman empire or the fourth reich in reading revelation chapter 13 verse 2 and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and its great authority so here we have the terrible beast with a composite of the leopard of the book of daniel chapter 7 found in revelation 13 which is not surprising because we know that daniel and revelation are one so here we have the composite of the four beasts together one is the terrible beast is like unto a leopard with the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion so that brings back the same animals as daniel chapter 7 but this time we believe this is a present the application and so as we look at the chart that we have prepared for the study of the book of daniel you can find much further information that what we're going to show you here but it's just a brief overall looking at history in order to place those four beasts in, a, in their order and we have it here in 880 up to today we're going to represent the holy roman empire and when we look at the word Reich, this was used during the Second World War by Hitler. Reich in German simply means an empire or a kingdom. And here we have, again, the four beasts that we're talking about. They're right here. So we have the lion's mouth, the feet of a bear, the leopard-like beast, and to which the dragon has given its power, seat, and authority. So the first king, as we look at the first column, we want to look specifically at Charlemagne, who in around 800 to 814 AD attempted to unite Europe for the first time to enter marriage. He was from Germany, he was a king from Germany, and he married a queen from France, so that united those two countries, which were mainly always at war. And of course, including in this, we cannot forget that the other countries of Europe were also involved there and we have russia for example kazaria which we know russia as the emblem of a bear and also the anglo-saxon which their emblem is the lion and uh, which is called now it went from there to being england to britain to uk but this is a representation of the first king throughout history 
repeating themselves as you can see they're finding themselves all the time back and to their to their timing here timeline so the second king after the death of Charlemagne, 814 to 1798 this is where we establish the supremacy of the pope the first supremacy of the pope and we use of course 530 AD for the 1260 years but nevertheless it's still inclusive and we can see again Germany and France united as leaders, but this time under Napoleon during the French Revolution, where the Pope is taken prisoner to General Berthier and he dies in France. And this is the end of the supremacy, the first supremacy of the Pope, and it won't be repaired until 1929 after the First World War through Mussolini. So this is the end of the second reign of the Holy Roman Empire but it, it includes the first supremacy of the Pope all over Europe. And again, Russia as an empire now is established. And we're talking the era of 814, 1798. And of course, this includes 1776, where the United States was part of the wings of the eagle and the lion, which is uh, Britain, or we call it UK today. So this is again a perfect emblem of actual now nations that are not past and still exist and still have those emblems as representing them so the history can be followed because of all those important details on the third king we go now from 1933 to 1945 which is the third reich so we have charlemagne and then we have the longer period until it's finished to 1798 with napoleon and now we have hitler which established the Third Reich, which lasts only for 1933 to 1945. He was hoping it would last for a thousand years, but due to the fact that he lost the war, World War II, the Third Holy Roman Empire was last, lasted only a few years, as you can see here. So actually it lasted from 1939 to 1945. It didn't last very long. But we still have involvement with Germany, France, as the people that were against each other at war. And then Soviet Union, by default, became protected by the USA and Britain. And so we have always the same players, it seems. But this is historical. We're not inventing it. So this represents, again, the third kings, always involving the same nation, as you can see. And, of course, Rome is behind that the Rome Covenant under the League of Nations after the First World War and under the United Nations after the Second World War. Those nations are united under the Rome Covenant and we can demonstrate that as well in history and in today. So the lions, the bear, the leopard and the terrible beasts always follow each other all the way from Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome and today actually we have the people from England, the people from the United States, this is the eagle, which are their signs, the bear of Russia, the leopard, which was used by Hitler during the war for his tank, the leopard one, and of course, the terrible beast to which the dragon gave it its seat and its great authority and its power. So this is an overall of what we believe is, can be definitely representative of the prophecy which is still to come, this fourth king, because the first three has already passed. We believe that this is very important to understand those prophecies in the light of what is happening today.